Welcome, Jill Fubister, to the podcast. It's so nice to meet you. Oh my gosh, thank you. It's so nice to meet you too and to be on here. Thank you for inviting me. I'm so excited. Well, you're very welcome. And this is one of my favorite subject matters. And I will be the first to say that I actually don't know a lot about intuition. I just know that I use it a lot, if that makes sense. Oh, totally, totally. <laughs> and we were just chit-chatting before we press record about, you know, when you you speaking and performing, I find that intuition plays a massive role in how you connect and show up, uh, both on stage, online, in front of a microphone, on podcasts. Anytime you speak or perform, I think intuition plays a massive role in that. And so I really wanted to get your take on it. Maybe we should just start by introducing you and then we can jump in. All right. Yeah, of course. So yeah, I'm Jill Fubister and I help my students increase their frequency so they can strengthen their intuition and manifest faster. So um, yeah, we talk a lot about raising our vibrations and what you were just talking about with using your intuition, with connecting to your voice. So much of it gets down to trusting yourself. And when you lean into trust and leading in with your higher self, what needs to come through can come through, whether it's telling a story, whether it's um, channeling, downloading, whatever you want to have self-expression in. I love it. So do you find that a lot of people don't trust themselves? Don't trust their I have found that's probably one of the most common students that I attract where they trust themselves here and there but they want to trust themselves even more where they're not in self-doubt right. and they want to kick gear to like the back seat and start leading with their higher self. Yes. So the fear gets in the way of working with your higher self. Yes. Yes. So it, the way to see it is you have your spiritual being having a human being experience. And part of the human being is the brain that has that inner critic. That has the fears of, well, what if it doesn't work? What if people judge me? Um, what if I'm not good enough? And then you have your higher self that is, is just pure potential of you can be anything. That's not true. Those are just thoughts. Mm -hmm. And when you can be in the present moment to allow that to come through, that's when our intuition just shines. That's really interesting because I often say to my students, if you can shift the way you think, then you shift the way you speak. Oh, yeah. So, oh, your voice. I'm sure yeah. you know that too. Your voice changes. Yes. Okay. So if we start shifting that, those thoughts in the inner critic so that we can open up that channel and, and have that intuition come through, what are some of the things you start to notice? Like, for example, with voice, because we're talking about voice, then how does that start to shift how you use your voice then? Yeah. So actually, well, we, and I'm sure you know this as well. You're working with your throat chakra, which mm. is self-expression. And whenever you're in self-expression, you are allowing yourself, your true authentic self, your frequency to come through and shine. Your light is shining. You're in your personal power. And when you're doing that, nothing's in your way. Have you ever had those? Okay. What is something you absolutely love doing? Well, performing, I love doing voiceovers. Yeah. Okay. It. So when you're doing that, have you ever noticed when you're doing it and you're really in it, all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, three hours have gone by. I haven't even eaten. And you're just like, yeah. time doesn't even exist. That's when you're so in the present moment and self-expression and intuition is coming through your higher self. Uh, yes. Because I often, when I'm working with students, that's the 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 destination the outcome is to when they're done let's say we're working on a scene together and I say how was it I want them to go I don't know I have absolutely no idea right yeah. and those are the moments that I I think that's why actors are so drawn to acting is because there's so much excitement life energy when you can live in that place of not not knowing what happened, but you just know it felt so good. I think that's what keeps, it's almost like a drug. It keeps actors coming back for more or even public speakers, perhaps doing keynote speeches. 
you feel that energy and there's nothing like it. I totally. So I'm, I was sharing this with you. Um, I actually used to be an actress. And when you had mentioned like, how, well, how was the scene? I don't even remember like, yeah. <laughs> those moments because you're so in it. And when you're so present, you become that vessel for the energy and that character, whatever you are expressing to just come through you. And so you're basically getting out of your own way, getting out of your noise for that character to just come alive. Okay. So, but now for those that are not performers, how can yeah. they experience that then? Speaking their truth, following their dharma, which is mm. the same as what an actor is doing. So if you're someone doing a keynote presentation and you're in front of people owning and knowing that whatever you're saying, you're doing it to make a difference, make an impact. You're helping someone, even if it's only one person. And mm. when you focus on, I'm just going to help one person. Now you're not in the noise of the judgments of, oh, what are they thinking of me? Am I being loud enough? Can they read my notes? Oh, did I have a spelling error on there? They're just up there allowing to come through whatever needs to come through. Oh, wow. This makes so much sense. The, we work very similar, but in different ways, but with similar Absolutely. concepts. And the one thing I didn't know is, so self-expression comes from the throat chakra. Yes. Speaking your truth. Okay. Are and there different like, other ways that you can self-express or is that where it comes absolutely from? All, I mean, so many different ways, but like when, because you're a voice coach and we're talking about voice and speaking your truth, speaking what's from your heart, not from your mind, right? Not what your brain wants you to say straight from your heart. Mm -hmm. And allowing that to come through without a filter of judgment or, um, or, uh, trying to, what, what's the word? Like a censor, you're not censoring yeah. yourself. And how can um, you tell if you're, if you're ex like, you're speaking your truth or yeah. not, like, can you tell the difference? You can, there's a few things that happen. Um, if you're not speaking your truth it's so much in your body language. You can actually feel your shoulders because so it's our throat chakra right here, right? Yeah. And if you're not speaking your truth, you might feel tightness. You might feel your shoulders close in. Mm -hmm. It's all in the body. And mm -hmm. have, you mentioned it earlier, your, it changes in your voice yeah. and what's internally going on with you. Mm -hmm. What's the internal thoughts of when you're speaking? So often, um, like one of my huge life lessons I had to experience was speaking my truth and not, um, you know, don't rock the boat to, you know, you know, stay quiet. So you don't rock the boat. And it's like, no, it's, it's okay for me to speak up and say, no, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. Or, um, no, I'd like to stay longer or just have that self-expression of sharing what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. So one of the other things I talk about when uh, I'm, you know, teaching others about voice is that voice is energy, that it has energy. And I had recently noticed that I had an energy block in my voice where I noticed that I wasn't posting things on social media. I wasn't showing up as much because I, I could feel that there was a block there. And just curious to know what your take on that is. Yeah. So, um, you were, were you having thoughts of not wanting to express yourself because of being judged or do you know what the block is? Have you discovered it or do you want to discover it? Yes. I'm past the block. I am past the block. Oh, you're past the block. Yeah. So All for right. me, it was an alignment thing. Um, just to give you a little backstory, I was very niche down with my voice coaching and I wanted to niche up to work with more people in a more greater capacity. And so I had a block in not knowing how to communicate that. So instead of communicating, I did the opposite and I completely stopped communicating until I could figure it out. And then once I had that alignment, I thought, okay, now the block is gone. Now I can actually use my voice again. And it felt much lighter, but I could notice like a clear distinction of like, oh no, I, 
I have no idea what to say. I'm not showing up to. I'm good. I got this now. I'm ready to speak. And your voice does have a frequency. Mm. And there is no one else that has your frequency as well. So when you're speaking and your words, they carry frequency. We speak our life into existence. But also when you speak, it may just be the one thing that hits someone right where they needed to for something to click. So yeah. that whether that's um, as an actress or, uh, or an actor, when you're speaking with your frequency, you're bringing them along for the story and they're riding those emotions with you. Or if it's with um, a presentation standing in front of people, your frequency of how you say it might just be that one thing they needed to hear. Mm -hmm. And other people are saying the same exact thing, but they're not saying it through the way you say it. And it lands. Yeah. Yeah. It's so good. And the, hold on a second. Wait. So you have your own frequency. So it's sort of like a fingerprint, like everyone's frequency is different. Yeah. So, well, so everything's energy, right? Okay. So everything is vibrating. Everything is energy and everything also has its own frequency. For example, mm. your energy, I'm energy. The cell phone is energy. The chair I'm sitting in, you're sitting in, it's all energy. The difference between the chair and you is the speed at which it vibrates. Mm -hmm. So the chair is vibrating much slower. The waves mm -hmm. are a lot slower. You are vibrating at a much higher rate. Mm -hmm. Now your voice, all the different words that you say, that's frequency as well. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about getting in alignment, we want to put our thoughts, our behaviors and actions in alignment with what we want. Mm -hmm. So for example, I love looking at it this way. So if mm -hmm. it was something was showing up on social media and someone goes, I want to have um, a million followers, but I don't want to be seen. That's totally out of alignment right? because what you're actually playing is I don't want to be seen. So the, I don't want to be seen is the frequency you're giving off, right? Put yourself into the alignment of it's safe to be seen. I know that I'm helping people. Is it sort of like, okay, you've got an input and an output and you're the container. So the yeah. container could be like a nice, clear, open cylinder. So it just goes straight out. Yeah. But let's say you're a mate. Then, right, you have to sift through all the things to actually get to the output. And a lot oh, of us are a maze, right? We're not the yeah. clear cylinder. Yeah. I love, I love that you say it like that. Absolutely. I never saw it that way. And that's so, it's so true. Yeah. I also see it as like a hose. You're the, the hose of water coming through and it's either mm -hmm. working in the hose or letting like, the water come through. Like a little yeah, trickle or something. Dripping, just yeah. A little bit. Exactly. Okay. So we well, here's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> here's where it gets really interesting, Jill, because I often, so because I'm American, but I live in Sydney, Australia. So a lot of the students that I work with are Australian or from other countries that want to sound American. So with my actors, it tends to be a lot of actors that want to learn the American accent so they can book U.S. roles. So I work a lot with not just voice and speaking, but accent. Accent's so interesting depending on where you live because you start to get more of that maze because in the US, it is more of that open channel where you can go straight through. Australia, for example, they close up the space. So there's more angles for the sound to get out. And so the, it actually, when they speak, they retract the sound and the energy back into the body. It's harder for it to get out versus American, it's much easier to get out. And when you equate that to, let's say, culture, the culture behind how we speak American, our thought is based on freedom of speech, yeah. the right to be heard, right? Which resonates with our alignment and the energy exiting out of the body. Australia, it's different. It's is it right. If I say something right now, did you get that? It's very polite and hesitant. It's like, just want to make sure that you're okay. It's a lot of checking in with the other person. And so a lot of it pulls back into the body and the energy goes inward instead of outward. 
That is so interesting. I did not know that about the Australian accent. I have family that lives in Australia. Um, you do? So I do. My husband is from the UK and his sister lives in Sydney. So oh. this is, I know. So we've been to Sydney and it's beautiful. And we love, love, love Australia, but I did not know that about their accent. Well, any That's Commonwealth so country like UK, Canada, the Commonwealth countries in general, and also, you know, when I talk about accents, it is generalized, like not everyone is this way, right, right, right. but a lot of, you know, our culture shapes how we communicate. And so when you come from one of these Commonwealth countries, it tends to pull back. Like you'll notice with the UK, it's a drier comedy uh, when they, you know, are making jokes and stuff like that. It's kind of like you either got it or you didn't. Whereas America, it's like, did you get that? But on bunch, <laughs> right? So <laughs> it's very different. And so yeah. what you may have noticed when you came to Sydney is Americans were like, huh? How are you? Oh my gosh, look at Sydney. It's amazing. And then people look at you like, whoa, like, hold on a second. We're loud. Like, loud. I was always told I'm loud, which yeah. I never seen. I thought I'm like, I'm actually quite reserved, but my husband being from the UK, it's like, no, no, no. Americans are loud. <laughs> yeah. 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 So a lot of that is two things. It's, you know, coming from the, the, in the U S we are conditioned to raise our hand and to, you know, speak up. Right. Yeah. So that then our makeup requires us to be more open so that the sound can project like a megaphone out to be heard to get further in society because you know there's so many of us nobody's just going to yeah. give us anything we've got to make ourselves known somewhere like the UK or Australia it's a very different way of communicating so if you're loud they actually see that as a turnoff yeah so wow. it's more about being reserved therefore the energy goes inward and it's much more subtle and that's attractive here that is so interesting yeah 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 so with like the the energy and the vibration like I get it now because it really it it depends on the person because it's like you've got that thought and you've got the output but it's the container that affects how it goes through and changes the frequency and maybe the frequency shifts many times like depending on the angle is that also? oh yeah absolutely yeah. yes mm. we are receivers and transmitters mm. yes. so cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay so that makes more sense to me because i was thinking with intuition i can understand how that works for an actor being in the moment and being present and and that concept of not knowing what happened is knowing that you, you've you've gotten there but now for the non-actor it's about speaking your truth so for example if you're doing a podcast interview or you're doing a, a keynote speech or something like that even a, a launch where you get to the end and you're leaning into your dharma or your truth means that you're out of your head and you're really in your heart right you're Absolutely. When we're not in our head, we drop into our heart and we speak mm -hmm. from there, especially mm -hmm. if it's, um, yeah, a launch and you, mm -hmm. I had one launch and just before I launched, I lost my voice. Oh. It was gone. And I go, Oh no, it's my throat chakra. I know why this is happening. I was starting to feel like it was getting raspy and dry. And it was like, because I'm going to have to do this launch and speak my truth. And I was nervous. Mm. I was nervous of like being seen, being heard. Mm -hmm. And I just had to keep telling myself, no, this is my Dharma. This is safe for me to do it. And I'm inviting people into my container. And when they come into my container, it's okay for me to be me. Yeah. And then like that, I had my voice back and I had a good launch. So, you know, it's, it's, those are other ways you can look at it as well. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's really great. And for somebody who is, let's say, new to intuition and these concepts of raising your vibration, how do you even, if somebody's interested in starting, how do you even start? Okay, so let's start here. Have you ever had a moment in your life where you go, oh, I 
should have trusted my gut. I knew that just tells you that you are intuitive Mm -hmm. and that part of you is who you truly are. We all have that. It's not like Susie down the street was born gifted with intuition and uh, Jessica down the street didn't get it. No, we're all born intuitive. We all have good. But wait, and are so, some of us more intuitive than others? Like, can you the be way more I, intuitive? Okay, so I would put it two ways. One is some people, when they're born, they are born in a society or a family where they keep the door open and it's encouraged of mm-hmm. like, well, just trust your gut. Well, how do you feel? Well, what do you think? And if they were to say, hey, um, like I have little kids. And when my kids come to me like, mommy, I had this dream and I saw this and this, I never say to them, Oh, it's just a dream. Mm -hmm. I just keep them curious. Tell me more. Tell me more. So if you're raised in an environment and a culture like that, it's going to keep it open, which gets stronger. If you're told at a young age of, um, oh, that's not a thing. Oh, don't, no, uh, there's no, there's no such thing as trusting your gut or um, it's just a dream. Nothing's real. That's not real. You got to keep going, 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 going you have a choice in that moment. And as a child, you may believe that adult and just close the door. It's always there, but it's like a muscle and we just have to strengthen it again. That's all it is. It's not like it's gone forever. It just means that it's a muscle we need to strengthen. Um, That's so cool to think of it like a muscle. Yeah. Just like going to the gym. So when you're working with me, it's, we're just working the muscle. We're working it like going to a gym class and raising your vibration is again, so I focus on law of vibration and that everything is energy. That includes you, that includes me, that includes the table and that we are bringing more light back into ourselves. And so another way to look at it is raising your vibration is letting go. And so often we think, well, what are we letting go of? Okay, so we're letting go of limiting beliefs, anything that's standing in our way so we can get into alignment. <clears throat> but people think, Oh, but letting go is a loss. No, letting go is returning to who you truly are, Mm. who you are. And it's a journey of remembering how powerful, how powerful of a creator you are and allowing that to come through. And it's living in harmony with your spiritual self, your higher self, and the human part of yourself and being a team. It's not get rid of ego, ego. Like it's about, no, how can you also love the ego and live together and work in harmony? Mm, Yeah. I love that. That's such a great way to think about it. So I can start to see then how in your, for example, your business or your profession, where if you can have that balance of, let's say the head, the strategy and that sort of thing. And then the heart, the intuition of that can be a really powerful duo like Batman and Robin to progress your business or your career. It's yes. So I'll use my intuition in making decisions within my business, Mm -hmm. still using strategies. I'm not throwing out business strategies. No, we got to love the strategies, but how can you find the right strategies for you? And in with hiring a team, Mm -hmm. trusting your gut. Is that going to be the right fit for us? They may look amazing on paper, but when you're actually talking and working, is there a vibe that you guys are both connecting or is there something off? So that's where intuition can play as well with business. Yeah, that's so good. I love it. This has been so interesting and just eye-opening because it's, it's funny how sometimes when I do interviews with people, you realize that there's so many similarities in a lot of us experts and coaches, but the way that we teach it is slightly different because, you know, yours is through intuition, mine is through voice, but there's so many similarities. It's all connected. It's all connected. Yes, And you have your self-expression and bringing it through the way you're meant to bring it through to help your people. And that's what's so beautiful about it. Mm, I love it. Where can people find you if they want to learn more about 
into yeah Instagram? um so i'm on instagram jill underscore fubister f-o-u-b-i-s-t-e-r and uh, my website is jilltrainings.com I love it. Well, thank you so much, Jill. This was super fun to chat with you and learn more about what you do and and share it with my community. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Of course. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you.